I'm going to teach you how to create GTA in Scratch. This is one of the very few videos that actually teaches you how to do this in completion with all the mechanics of the original GTA. And this is what you're gonna have at the end of this video. This game is very complex. You're gonna learn a lot of new techniques in Scratch, which will broaden your programming knowledge and just make you a stronger programmer overall after this. So you're gonna leave this tutorial series equipped with a lot new knowledge. And if you did notice, the the preview did not have any missions. And if this video gets 1,000 likes, I'm going to create missions in our tutorial series. So let's get started. In this video, we're gonna be covering the movement part of the game. So. To begin with, we're first going to input a brand new sprite. And this can be found in the description. Um, we're going to use this idle sprite. And we're going to set its size to 65. And we're going to set its name to player. And of course, we're going to get rid of the cat because we don't need him in this, this video. So now let's set it in the center. And now we're going to make our backdrop. We're not going to upload anything, but we're going to paint it. We're going to paint it black. So we go to brightness and then we're going to convert it to bitmap and select the fill option and fill it and make the background black. And then we're going to create a city. And this is an edited version of a city that I had a while ago that I downloaded a while ago and we can find it right here. So of course, this is GTA and the map isn't gonna be this small. We're gonna have to um, use what we call scrolling. If you're familiar with Scratch, you might've heard that before, but basically it's where we enlarge our map and just scroll past it um, into the smaller bits and only load the bits that we're actually seeing. Um, and I'll show you how to do that right now. Um, we're going to start with creating um, when flag is clicked we're going to go to back layer. Um, so let's go to the back layer. And then we're going to switch the costume. And we're going to upload a brand new sprite. Or not upload, I keep making this. Um, we're going to have to paint a new sprite. And then just zoom in. And then create a black dot. And then bring that black dot into... Okay and then bring that black dot into the middle. Just scroll, okay. So make it as small as possible. So as you can see here, we have four by four. And then we're going to switch our costume to costume one, our small little ball. We're gonna move it to the, to the top. And then we're going to set the size to 600 and see if that works. If we could play, is the size 600? Yes. And then we're going to switch the costume back to city. Now if we click play, we'll see that our city has been enlarged and that's exactly what we wanted to do. Um, now we're able to scroll up across the city. You can see that the sprite is so huge. And the reason we're using this small ball is if we were to do it like this, um, city will be maxed out by 150 because Scratch doesn't allow you to um, make sprites as big as we want them. So in this case, we have to use this workaround. Um, next, we're going to create two new variables, the first one being X for all sprites and then Y for all sprites. And then we're going to delete this my variable and then we're going to set X and set Y and we're going to set them to a specific um, position. I'm going to set it to negative 77, 777 and then negative 278. And then we set that right under here and then we're going to go and create a forever loop um, right here and then we're going to set in the motion we're going to set x and set y forever to x and y 
um, okay this should be Y so let's um, go here and grab Y set Y to Y okay so now if we play this we'll see that we changed our position so um, you can choose any spawning point you want for our player here I chose um, negative 777 and negative 278 um, because if you look here this is where our player is and it's right next to the car so you want our player next to the parking lot so once they start up they're going to be able to like drive the cars that are parked um, and get to you know into the gist of the game really easily now we need to code our player and to do that um, we're going to start um, right here and we're going to say when flag is clicked um, we want him to the front because we have our city in the in the back layer so we're going to have our player in the front layer so we say go to front layer and then forever we're going to have it um, point towards the mouse pointer um, where do we have that point towards mouse pointer and then we're going to create another um, variable we're going to call this um, previous x and for this one we want it to be for this part only then we create another one called previous y for this sprite only as well so now you can see it says player previous x player previous y because it's only for the player and if we go to our city we can't access that variable now let's um create the movement for our for our character we want it to be able to go forward and backwards so we'll say if um let's go to events and we'll say if we'll grab two if statements and then we're going to grab an if and else statement and put it right here and then we'll go to sensing and say if key pressed and then if key pressed and then if key pressed so we're going to have our player moving forward and front um forward and back as i said so our forward key is going to be w if you want you can have it be the up arrow and then the back space is going to be the s so forward back and then we're going to have a speed up. If you want our player to run a little bit faster, we're going to be holding S. It, um, that will speed up the player's movement. So then we say if pressing on S, but we we'll only have it speed up if you're going forward. Because you know in real life, if you're moving backwards, you can't really run backwards. Um, if you want to add that, then you would do the same here, but I'm not going to do that. Now we're going to create a brand new variable and we're going to call that speed for all sprites. And then we're going to set speed um to to 3.5 um and then if if we're running fast and if we're running at normal speed we have it as two and if we're running at backwards we have it at negative two since we're um, negating the direction we're going to um and then whilst we're um changing our speed we also want to move so we're going to create a block and we're going to call it move um just so we don't have to continuously write um what we have in our move block over and over um almost as um the same as the functions we see in programming so then we move these move blocks into here and we're going to move whenever we press one of these keys w a s or d and we're going to um then go to variables and we're going to set previous x and previous y um to x position and y position and then we're going to set that right under here and put this here so what we're doing with the previous x and y position is basically we want to um see where we are and then update it so we're, we're going to move the we're going to move the the map and not the player um so yeah that's basically what we're going to do um so now let's define our what move is and move is going to be move um, I'm going to um, explain it more once we do the move um, So now we're gonna say move speed and then we're going to change um, What do we have we're gonna change? Um, X and Y so we're gonna have to create another one called for this sprite only my X and Then we're going to create another one called my Y and then for this sprite only as well And then we're going to duplicate this so first we're gonna have my x and my y and then x and y and then as you see here we're moving speed steps so um we're actually moving the player at the beginning um to let's say um right here and what we're going to do is then change the x position according to in um, the direction our player has moved so to do that we're going to have to use a minus um operator and then bring in the previous x and previous y that we've used 
Um, so let's first do previous x, duplicate this, um, put previous y here, and then go to motion and select the x position and y position. So what we're basically doing here, just so I can explain, we're seeing previous x, the um, position we were in right now, which was zero um, in our um, for our player, it's always going to be zero. And then if we move forward, maybe in the forward direction, it would be 3.5. So then we're changing our Y by 3.5. And then we're, we're changing the city um, by that. It's a bit complicated, but if you, um, if you, if you do get it, that's great. Um, but if you don't, you, you will, you'll get the gist of it soon. Um, once I actually test the game, um, after that, we're going to move. Um, let's get rid of this and then go to operators and multiply this by negative one and we're going to move back to the original position so now um we've done this um we can see that our player is moving um it's kind of um the only thing is if we go to yeah actually everything everything is fine um this is a bit more we have to change the first one being our costume um let's select our player and have it face right um let's do this okay um now if we we'll, if we look it's gonna face wherever we look and we can speed up go back and everything we want to do um, now there's a few more things we're going to end up doing just to round this off. We're going to say when flag is clicked, we're going to set um, my Y and my X. Um, we're going to set my Y and my X to X um, and Y. And then we're going to want to show um, because later on in the game, we're going to end up hiding the player um, later on in the tutorial series. But um, for now, that's not necessary. And then we also want to update um our player's position so we'll say forever um position we're going to create a brand new block called position um and then we're going to say position and we're going to just define it as um simply go to um we need this go to block x y and then we're going to do the minus thing again um, so we just minus um, here and here, and then we go into looks for not looks but variables, and we're gonna say x, y, um, and then my x, my y. So now, if we full screen this, we can run a. Okay, that's a big problem. We also want to at the beginning of the game um, set our position to zero zero. Okay, now we can go again. Okay, so now if you move around, we can move around the city, we're in the middle, um, we can walk wherever we want to. And that's all we're doing um, this video. Thank you very much for watching. In the next video, we're gonna be animating our player and having it move around, um, it's move its feet and its um, hands, and then add a few. Yeah, that's, that's all the animation we're gonna be adding in the next video, so stay tuned for that, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.